They were live. Hello, boys and girls, lads and lasses, and welcome back to Roughnecks tonight for our race review. And Colin is on the chair. Quite literally. It's the most uncomfortable chair it is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so have you been enjoying it? Oh, here we go again. As and as usual, I forgot to mute street. I forgot to mute YouTube. <laughs> tisk, tisk, tisk. Yes. Yeah, it's I've I I can't remember when I first came across Roughnecks, but it's if anybody's not familiar with it, those who aren't, it's basically it's a, a TV series. And I'm echoing that, again from somewhere. That was me. That was me. <laughs> that's confusing. Um, which is it's it's a cross. It's a CGI children's series. Um, very definitely a kids series, although not young kids series. Um, young adult, I suppose you would probably call it. Yeah. And it's it's effectively a cross between Starship Troopers, the film, Starship Troopers, the book. Yes. Um, I've got my mobile infantry t-shirt on. Ah, and I've got my mobile that. infantry beside me. <laughs> as long as you don't try to put them in drop pods. Uh, if he annoys yeah. me, he'll get put in a drop pod. Mm -hmm. <coughs> the so the yeah. interesting is it's it, it what I find interesting, I hadn't realized till I, till I was looking up the information, but the 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 series is actually executive produced by Paul Verhoeven. So hopefully he actually read the book this time. Yeah, but a bit more a bit well, it was after I've 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 got the 44 episodes i yeah. didn't realize i had the 44 because i could only find the eight and the eight are actually the eight campaigns yeah so that's why that's I, day, I it, it them. when it was so, put out when it was originally broadcast it was broadcast as half an hour i think roughly episodes but when they released it on dvd the episodes were brought together in campaigns on yeah. the DVD. So what you've effectively got is each, is each DVDs. The weird yeah. thing I find that the really weird thing I found about this show is that not the show itself, but that it, they made 36 episodes. Um, there's four extra episodes, which are basically clip shows. Yes. They made all of those and then they didn't make the one final campaign. There's one campaign missing. What was the one that was missing? The one that comes at the end. Um, I, sus I suspect, unfortunately, we, we, we may be dropping spoilers throughout this. For, Probably, but how old is it? For the, for, yeah, for both the series and the book. Um, it's I'm just, 19, 1999 the 2000 the original release yeah. um it was it was uh as a lot of these things that was bugged up on broadcast as well unfortunately um you well, cut, yeah. not, so, sorry and i could be i'm just i'm 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 cheating folks i've got the i've got the um Wikipedia article up in another window, but um, yeah, there's this. They they then didn't make the last episodes uh, due to production problems. Unquote. <laughs> the, it was it was originally supposed to be broadcast. Interesting. The reason it was done in five episodes, it was supposed to be each week was a campaign of five daily episodes. It was supposed to so it was supposed to be broadcast on a daily basis. Five days and each week, well, the five episodes will be a campaign. Um, it follow I, I, the way I actually think about it. It actually fits in quite nicely with the um, with the book. If if you you should have combined the two because I mean, for example, for Hoven keep or the the, the, the series keeps the um, mixed gender character of the mobile infantry from the films 
which is not in the books. In the books, it's it's male only, yeah. Which makes the concept of um, uh, the the um, romance triangle between Rico, Carmen, and Dizzy quite confusing when you think that Dizzy Flores is actually a broke in the books. Yeah. Um, but they they, they 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 keep that, but they brought a lot of other things. You you could almost have it as um as as TV series filling in the all gap. the bits. Yeah, filling in the gaps. Yes. yes. Because the Pluto campaign, the very first bunch yeah. are set prior to well, mm. it's all uh, I think the first five sets was before Condathus, so it's when yeah. Johnny Rico is in training. So well, they, they, in the movie Condathus is his first Yeah. Well they, they they it's a slightly different take on it. So it's 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 definitely separate from the films because the way they start is that, that they start the um they first come across the bugs on Pluto. Yeah. Um and then when they defeat the bugs on Pluto, they then find that um, the bugs aren't native to Pluto. They think they're originally native, native to Pluto. Yes. Um, and then they see the giant it was the, yeah. was the space bug. Yeah. And that's when they actually determine that it's not native to Pluto and that. Yeah, they actually but follow... I must admit, it's... The, sh the show itself is a good, apart from the graphics on it. The graphics, I've seen better graphics than a computer game. But yeah, the actual storyline, it's just a bunch of grunts just getting thrown in one after the other, after yeah. the other campaign. Yeah. And, and, it, and it's, 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 it's also very cleverly done. The way they actually deal, deal with it um, is that in in fact, um, the main viewpoint character isn't one of the grunts. It's Paperboy, and he's called yeah, he's yeah. called Paperboy because he's an embedded reporter. Yep. So, and it's all from his mm. understanding of it. Yeah. Some Do you know, I must admit, I didn't realise at the time watching it, but obviously reviewing it, it's one of the Delawese boys is in this. Yeah. Um, there's, 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 there's a couple of others. Yeah. There's a couple of others because the, um, the, there are three. You got cut out there, you said three. You cut out when I, you said I think it's at least three original characters from the from the book, uh, book and the film. Um, well, Johnny Rico. No, no, four, four, because you've got Johnny Rico. In fact, I'm Johnny. No, basically, one of the characters you've actually got there is Sergeant Zim. Um, yeah, who was in the book, yeah. and they were doing it. With, and he's a Zim from the book rather than the film. He starts off as a training officer and the rest of it. He's played by, he's voiced by one Clancy Brown. Yes, that's true. And so Clancy, Clancy does him again. Yeah. So yeah, Clancy and you've Brown also done. another good one is um, R. Lee Emery. I was about to say, yes. Sky Marshall. As soon as I heard his Sky voice, Marshall. I thought, oh my God, there you go. It's the gunny. The Sky Marshal yeah. is gunny Ermy. Yeah. Yes. But uh, both yes. Um, Ardley Emery and uh, Clancy Brown, they were only in all in all for four episodes. Yeah. So, well, it's, it, it, it's one of those things you 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 want more of those two. Yeah. But I you can understand why it's cut down. Right. Hold on, I'm going to have to cut off because these two are actually fighting with each other. Oh. Well, it, but uh, I mean, in in terms of the um, the original actors uh, or voiceovers, it's fantastic to get them back again. But they, yeah. this was a surprise to me that they made animated series around this. 
and it literally went under the radar. Well, like, the, I mean, it, like, yeah, it, that's true. It's very true. It did go under the radar because mm. how many people love Starship Troopers and have never even heard of this one? Yeah. I mean, I had heard of it, but hadn't seen it when I first watched Starship Troopers <laughs> and um, coming through. I only found out about it probably about 12, 15 years ago. Mm. We thought about maybe 2010. <laughs> You know what I mean? Yeah. So, and that was already 10 years old by that time. Yeah. Well, I mean, the, the thing is, it's, it's odd because Starship Troopers is one of those really, really, of probably quite rare instances where you've got, in most cases, people love the book and they can take the IP or they hate the, or they hate the, the the production of it, or they uh, love um, Starship Troop. Wrong, uh, correct me if I'm wrong here, uh, because uh, Casper Van Dien, once he did John Rico in the first film, <sighs> he was very keen on taking over everything. Yeah, yeah. I, I, because, I, because he was happy with it. It is like, wow, this is something I'm, that can yeah. be built on. Well, it was in and the we, fourth movie. In... Not, not only the fourth movie, he I wanted to be like an entire cinematic universe around. Yeah. And the yeah. thing is, this is when you can. Yeah. Yes. Because it's a war movie yeah. and the cinematic universe around it could include anything. As long as the bugs and the war with the bugs is the background to it. Everything yeah. else. You can some... have your back end where there's no bugs and it's just the supply the yeah, I mean I love uh, Hero Mars, Traitor Mars yeah. uh, I believe in Traitor Mars, John Rico is not even in it but in Hero Mars he is an animated character because it's a, a, a 3D film Yeah, yeah so um... Traitor Mars is actually live action no, yeah. Mars, no, no, the, the live action ones are Starship Troopers, Hero of the Federation, which Rico is not in. Um, yes, but he's kind of the and, guy. And spoiler alert, he's bad guy. Marauder. Ma Ma and Marauder. And Marauder was and the Marauder, other one, yes, which yes. Which has the massive plus point of. It has of, Dizzy and Rico back in it. No, no, that's no my order. That's no, not my order. No, because this is this is this is this is killed off in the first one. No, yes. it has it has the mass massive plus button of Joel Blaylock walking around in a vest for most of the film. Yeah. It but, also unfortunately it has one, they did in one of them they did uh I don't know if it was a flashback or whatever, but Dizzy was back in it. The the woman who played Dizzy was back in it. Voice they, one of the Dina Myers. Yeah, they, they uh -huh. might have done, but I'm pretty certain there was only three live action ones because you've got Traitor of Mars, um, and there's a, there's a Traitor of Mars, I think Rico's in. There's another one, or at one point he's in it, but the first time you see him being led away, he's a major and he's being led away in handcuffs. Yeah, at the beginning of one of them, I think then he comes back towards the end. Um, <sighs> But you've it would because you you've also got um because Brenda Strong who played the uh, uh Ibanez, the Carmen's cap the captain of the captain the, in the, the, the major yeah. film yeah yeah of the of the Valley Forge you bastard for home and you destroyed Roger the Roger Young. Young he blew the you you blew the Roger Young up no you did you blew up the Roger Young one thing I really hate I hate about that film. He doesn't have it. He blows the water young up. That's, shouldn't do that. But yep. she kept. She comes back as another character in. I think it's Starship Troopers too. Completely different character. So you've got the same actress come back again. But what I really liked about this series, um, it's probably. I think I saw this before I saw the animated movies. Um, and it's definitely much a much better representation, I think, on the whole 
of the book because for starters you've got the drop capsules yeah. you've got the you've got the proper armor well of sorts I mean not necessarily I mean the the, the the closest thing you've got probably to real drop caps the real drop troopers is probably well, 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 let's face more. it Colin they, they <sighs> did redesign them a little bit to make it fit for yeah. the film yeah, well, yeah. the drop and suit it, armors it was... are literally um what, what would I say? It's like it's Warhammer 40k. Oh, so much, yeah, definitely. Dropping out of orbit and just yeah. crash. Well, I was exactly thinking. Planet. Um, if you if you 40k, if you think the ones I can't remember what they call, but the ones with the jetpacks that so the, the ones with the jet the ones with the the, uh, the, the, the jetpack troops, the close combat troops, those are mobile infantry, literally, because yeah. you see them in and. In the first first chapter, you get a bit where Johnny jumps, boosts, drops bombs, and comes down again. And he actually used the jetpack to, to, to boost his jump. Yeah. Yeah, well, this, uh, this is from the book where and he's here. Of Mark, I remember, I was, uh, remember I was saying a bit dizzy. She was mm. actually back in, obviously, the voice in Traitor and Mars. So when they did that, they they, they had a cut scene back out back with me. Oh right! So well, they did. Well, they did, did, did it was a bloke, mm. but I do. Yeah, in the fella, in the in the book, if, if it's a bloke. Yeah. Ever any lady to play a bloke, and in a gender conversion, Dina Myers is always top notch. I mean, yes. a curly redhead, charming, cute, beautiful. And capable, and yeah. she was in John and Mnemonic. And uh, I remember <laughs> both. Exactly. I remember. I remember <laughs> both her parts in those films. <laughs> yep. <Yeah. laughs> um, I have no clue what you're talking about. <laughs> Just but keep they, it safe for YouTube. <laughs> um, the thing is, what I like with because it was episodic in format, they actually had. Obviously, said they started when they actually had a lot more progression. The, the, the other thing you've got is is very, very similar to the books, is Rico's progression is the same. Yeah. He gets promoted. He gets promoted to corporal. He gets promoted to sergeant when the sergeant gets taken out, when Buto gets taken out, in believe it out. And then he becomes lieutenant when Rysak yep. is killed. Yep. Oh, and not only have I got Iron Brew tonight, I've got some soda. I've got some Johnny, <laughs> Johnny Rico soda. Oh my god! Would yeah. you like to know more? Would you like to know more? Yeah, that's that's that's, that's that's the one thing they do mention in, in particularly about the series. They've not got the the political the, the politics is in the not series. got the politics. The politics is all behind it with the. Uh, Within it's all within the military, so it's more the you've got the political officer rather than politics yeah, on the screen, this, so it's nothing this, like that. Yeah, and Carl's back to being a psychic, not yes. a um, um, standing for World War II mid -century, mid 20th century Germans, yes. So um, yes, he basically uh, alters the the thought process of Dizzy when she or well, Flores she's called she's very rarely called Dizzy in it. Yeah. So she's always called Flores in it because they use surnames rather than nicknames. Yeah. So, and she's basically claustrophobic, and they basically it alters her yeah. name. Mm -hmm. well, that that that's one thing. I can't describe it or put my finger on it, but the, uh, shall we say, military service I did as a teenager, a young teenager, we had our call signs or our nicknames yeah. referred to because it was easier. Because if you had seven people with the last name the same. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You had to figure out you had, a way of you had, to, you had to, you had to, you had to, yeah. 
Mm. Yeah, so, so you went for a nickname and just like for those of you that have actually seen uh, Big Bang Theory when Wolowitz is going to space and he becomes <laughs> Yes! <laughs> yes. It, so it, it is Fruit Loops is not a negative thing. No. It just happened to be something that makes him stand out from anyone else with his same first name, last name, or rank. Yeah, and so the thing is, quickly uh, say, "Hey, Fruit Loops, can you fix this?" Yeah, and the thing yeah. is, um, within that, it was all it was a tradition that everybody got a nickname. Hence, the reason why you constantly tried to make himself Rocket Man. Yeah. It's been in. Uh, well, I I can't vouch for my army uh, that I was trained in, but it had been a tradition way before World War One. Yes, I. but but oh, yeah. the tradition is usually within the group because the officers would call you. So if you had, there was all the, there was always a joke like one two three O'Leary. It was basically it was a wee rhyming slang song. And one of the, my dad's friends hated when he was in uh, the army because there was five of them, only all O'Leary's. And they always had to actually give the last three parts of their mm. army number and their surname when they were. So if because there was five O'Leary's, they would basically say four, three, seven O'Leary. Like you see in Zulu when they're yeah. all the Jews. Yeah. Uh, and his was. His last three numbers were one, two, three. He says he hated it because he always oh. had to stand up and say one, two, three, O'Leary. And he yeah. liked it because of that. But but within the group, we all had nicknames. But when the officers mm. or the sergeants were talking to them, maybe you know the sergeants, but the officers were talking to them, it was always they always gave their serial part of their serial number and their name to distinguish them because. Yes, you had multiple ones. Well, you've you've also got. Um, I mean, there's also the fact, of course, that the main characters in all the iterations of Starship Troopers were schoolmates. Yes. The or the, the, the the main three. The main three. Were yeah, the main three yes, and they'd already um, met other people. And dizzy when you've got and dizzy as well. Mm -hmm. Although, but the good thing is. When they're off duty or when they're in the barracks, they're, they, they call her Dizzy. But yeah. when they're actually on campaign, they call her Flores. Yeah. yeah. Which is a nice touch because they don't carry it when they're in military discipline. They don't carry the nicknames across. No, but but, but that, that, that is the whole thing. The, the nicknames are internal to your unit. Mm. Mm -hmm. You can and it's separate good... everybody in your unit, but that's when it comes like... to the front line, that's why I you like... are LT Flores, LT yeah. Rico, LT yeah. Ratchak. Yeah, and that's why I like this because you look at a lot of movies that have got a similar group. Um, they all have when they've got their uniforms on, they've all got their call sign as if they're airplanes. So, like, you've got Maverick and stuff like that. They've yeah. all got that. And so you see all these space opera ones and they've all got their outfits on and they've all got their nicknames across space it. Space and above and beyond. Space above and beyond, yes. The wild cards, the crazy eight. And, yeah, that type of thing. But, but even then, their uh, designation was on the side of their ship. So it was like the King of Hearts. That well, they used it. They, it's something I think the American, I was going to, as, as far as I'm aware, that the American military tends to do, which with British military, certainly as far as I know, does, didn't. I know it does. Not, was, yeah. They, and they, those would be their call signs. Their call sign, Maverick's call sign would, was Maverick. You yes. saw that. You, you saw that. So the way they, yeah. um, the way sci fi treat the mm. and, I mean, when they're all suited up as if the pilots, where the good thing is with this, they didn't. Yeah, but it's 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 because I think it's because the um, if 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 something like any of those shows had been made in the in the by the Brits, you'd be different because we use because the system we. 
what happened there? You um, just bounced and came right. back in, and your sound went off. Oh, wow! That's you said the Brits. Then you went. Yeah, we we don't the way the way you had a your your call signs broke down, and I should know this. I was a signaler. Um, you would have a desi- you, you your unit would break down. So, p- perfect example. Um, Bravo two zero, the SAS story. Mm-hmm. Bravo Squadron, first patrol was Bravo one zero, second patrol Bravo two zero, third patrol was Bravo three zero, and then you would have Bravo two one, two two, two three would be certain members of the. Patrol. That's how the British Army doesn't. Whereas the Americans, from, from what I'm aware, you, you certainly see in all the TV and films, where it, they do it half the time. Their call signs are nicknames; they're not actual. Which I suppose it, it's it's got the advantage that. Um, you can't immediately see if there's a connection, whereas with the, our call sign system, anyone over here in the call signs can work out a certain number of all these call signs are probably the same unit, whereas you can't do that if you've got completely unconnected call signs. Mm-hmm. I suppose so. <laughs> so it's got but a it's it's nice to see when they actually go down the route, they don't actually have it as if there are all these five guys in this unit are suddenly, have all got call signs and they're referred to that over the channels because how many million are people and how many call signs whereas the way they actually, it's um, the unit and the member yeah. of the unit, so it is Roughnecks Flores and when they're talking and they're, and they're reporting in this yeah. is uh, Bravo, this is Alpha Red, uh, whatever so yeah. it was nice seeing that. That's what I'm saying. It was nice seeing that they didn't they just go, this is Maverick, we're coming in for this. And everybody knew who that was, whereas they were saying, this is um, Alpha Red, and they, they were, he- were were heading over to mm. help with Blue 3, that type of thing. So <laughs> you, they were you using the color <clears throat> signifier you, and you they say- were calling the unit number as well. You were saying that I was I was watching um, the movie version of the original Battlestar Galactica the other day, and when they're on when you when you've got Star Wars and Apollo have gone out and they're going to attack the when they're on a planet they're going to attack the Death Star not the Death Star the base star the Cylon base star yeah, yeah. and they, they decide okay well let's let's communicate on there because it make them think there's more of us and yes and, uh, and they would actually be magenta four and stuff yeah. like that. they would make yeah. up weird colours Star, star Wars comes in and says we got pink and purple squadrons what enjoy this <laughs> the, the look on the look on on Apollo's face goes oh no, we just stick to the proper ones, thank you. <laughs> yeah. But there's, 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 there's a lot of things I like where it's close to the book. For example, I'm, I'm genuinely trying to remember, but I've got a feeling that there's there's one character in the film and the book, in the film and the TV series, who is, who is, who is dead when the, is dead all the way through the book. And that's Ratchak. Aye, Ratchak. Ratchak, Ratchak dies before the before the book even starts. Uh huh. Because he's remember. actually just a teacher. He's not anything no, else. No, 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 no. Lieutenant Ratchak. Because you you uh, think what's 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 the first thing you what, what, where do we first meet them? They're coming back, and they go back on, and Ratchak's killed, covering them being Ratchak has been killed, covering the covering the retreat. Yes, uh, in the movie, movie, yes. uh No, no, in the the movie, in the movie, they conflate the two. They conflate um, Dubois, who's the teacher. And uh, he's a roughneck officer. uh Dubois has to have been an ex in service because you have to done your service to teach HMP. Mm Mm-hmm. But in the book, Radchak is killed off screen, and I don't think he's ever. I was trying to, but I don't think, even in the flashbacks, he ever he's ever actually live in the books. Whereas he's in the film, 
in, in the TV issues. Again, he's there all the way through until he gets killed off and Johnny takes over from him. Yep. Yeah, but well, this is, this is where you have to separate the book either. from the film. Mm. But yeah. yeah, Ratchak is dead. Mm. He, he is a ghost of the past. Mm. He was brought to life in the Paul Verhoeven film mm. to, to, to give a persona to it, just mm -hmm. to build out who was this specter. And he's also yeah. killed in the film to give him that specter, something yeah. to carry on, because that is what they're chanting at the end. It is they celebrating him mm. as being a good leader that unfortunately got killed but he when, instilled values he instilled a direction the the whole mm. campaign this is what well, you that, do and it's part of becoming citizen yeah like they, they call their homens focus <laughs> which you completely misunderstood but i mean the thing is that you you have to do that because it's alliterative you, you you know it that, that, that's why they can go from being Radchak's roughnecks to being Rico's roughnecks. But in the book, one of the main points they make is that the troop sergeant Jalal takes over, and because the unit is named for their commander, similar to in fact, as you mentioned on the forty k, a lot of the Warhammer forty k stuff. One of his but um. In the book, I don't know if you read the book or not, Jim, but in the book, there's a bit where they're having the chat and they all go up to Commander Jellal, to, 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 to acting Lieutenant Jellal. And they say, we're thinking um, Jellal's Jaguars. Um, and and Jellal says um, something on the lines of how many, he says, um, we, all, we all agree. And Jellal goes, that's X Fox one one against denied because he's he keeps on he keeps them as the roughnecks, which means that you could they can be Rico's roughnecks at the end of the book when Rico takes over. Same in the in the series. Yeah, you know they, that's some that's I suppose that's yeah. one reason in a way for keeping it's a lot lot easier to have Ratchak all the way through that and when he got you know until Rico takes over from him and they can still be the roughnecks all the way through. Yeah. I and know, but that is part of the book. So there is a TV yeah. show or the films. As roughnecks is easier than having it as Ratchet's rough, rough, uh, yeah. roughnecks, then Rico's roughnecks, then Bob Smith's roughnecks. It's just yeah. roughnecks. It's just whoever's in charge is. Yeah. Um, but yeah, but it's, it's because the, of, of, of the, the alliteration of Rico's or Ratchet's roughnecks. You yeah. know, Jedi's roughnecks wouldn't be alliterative. But, there's several things because one of the things I think that, that they missed two two big parts of the book, although not necessarily two important parts of the book, although not necessarily major parts that they missed in the film. One was they, as I said before, they missed the entire point of the mobile infantry being drop troopers. Yeah. The other one was. They missed out the skinnies in the film. Yeah. You'd be forgiven for thinking that the only two semi-intelligent races in the entire universe are humans and the bugs. Yeah. Whereas they don't the mention skinnies. any. They basically no. just mention as if the first um, intelligent life they deal with is the bugs, and it's yeah. because they get attacked. Yeah, no, no, the, 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 this is where Paul Verhoeven went completely wrong, because... Yeah. The bugs are a minor nuisance. The, the skinnies, and there's even another race involved in this, but the bugs, the arachnids, are the least problem that the mobile infantry, the Terran force, is facing. Yeah, They, they have plenty of em enemies, and the bugs are just like, like, but I, I we will why. deal with you uh, next week. Yeah. That is yeah. essentially what the book was about. I see. I can understand why they turned mm. it down like that for the movie. Because you imagine mm. them trying to do the movie, 
they would have had to it would it, it couldn't fit in there an hour and a half yeah. with no, everything no. the introducing this species that species that species this species that species yeah. and then having a war with this and that and fight it's too long in the book it works because you could put a lot of exposition well someone said i mean in in in, in the book that are uh, like the book is half exposition how much how much of the book is basically Johnny taking one or another history and moral philosophy class. How much of the book is just HMP? Yeah. Because he does several classes at school. He has to do it again when he's doing when he's doing officer training. But again, that's something because that they I loved it the way they did it, that they start off. So the basic story to, of follow through for the for, for the Ravnik's version, they come across, they discover the bugs on Pluto, mm -hmm. then they discover, oh shit, they're not from here, follow that bug, they come across the door, well, no, that's not it, they come across something to top it, and that's why they come across the skinnies. Well, the, 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 the book and is then, describing him enrolling into officer yeah. uh, <laughs> school training, and because it's a young um person's diary for lack mm. of a better word he's yeah. he's describing wow uh i have a lot of homework to do today i need yeah. to study this i need to study that i need to read this book i need to provide a a transcript of this yeah uh, a it, lot of look johnny is a lot more studious Mm -hmm. or, yeah. or a, a, a learner yes but the, that's the, the good thing line for... battle is just where we yeah. join part of the story but yeah go ahead pj no I, I was saying that for the book they can do that because yeah. him studying and his homework tells us about the world building yeah and so you imagine a mm. movie where they're following him through his classes for the first half of the book, how many people yeah. would have actually sat there for the second half? Well, that's, that's that I think is one reason why Highland had to start it in media res. He had to start the book in the action, and then do f half what half the book is flashbacks. Yeah. See, the thing is, is if you've got things so happening the the book. and they they do the flashbacks to explain something you don't know, that's fine because. Yeah. If they're suddenly attacking a bunch of skinnies and you have yeah. no idea who they are, and then they do a flashback to um, saying, but why should we attack these aliens? And this, 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 then it gives you context for mm. them attacking them. Yeah. And that, that works. But <laughs> what I'm saying is, if the, the good if for a movie, like, yeah, for movies, the thing is, not only did they actually completely change the book. He took the basics of the book at the beginning and then completely ignored everything else and just made his own yeah. anti-war war movie. No, he 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 thought he, he made thought an anti-fascist an anti movie. But it turned out he was <laughs> an anti-fascist movie, but he actually just made a really good, <laughs> a, an a good modern movie. Oh, yeah. But, I mean, yeah. again, there's, there's a thing, because, again, when they... I mean, again, in the book, the first time you see them, they're in battle. They're at their action against on top of it against the skinnies. And one of the main points of the of the that they make is that they are not there for a body count. They're there to do damage. They're, it's a psychological operation. They don't want to kill the skinnies. They want to bring them on side. Because you late we later have comment about them about the fact that the skinnies are an intelligence conduit into the bugs. They've got mm -hmm. you know, they get information about the bugs from the skinnies. So in the series, you start off with the skinnies of the bad guys, and then one of the skinnies, the commander of the skinny army, hello Jacob, actually joins the roughnecks. Yeah. So you've got this really clever storyline throughout the next um 
which one is it? It's it's one off the top of it, isn't it? It's, well, it's... you've got Pluto, um, Hydora, uh, Toffet, uh, Tesca, Tesca, uh, Zephyr, and so then did... it's, um, Clintatu. Yeah, part, part of the Tesca campaign is each of them in turn gradually, some more so than others, coming to terms with 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 skinny with defy whose nickname is colonel because he was a colonel in the skinny army as a private and then gradually coming to terms with the fact that their former enemy is now not only on their side but is is a teammate yeah you know again it's 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 some hint of that in the book but Heine never followed up on didn't have space to but again that's something else they pick up I think very well in the series and the thing is, the good thing about a TV series, no matter what, how bad we think a lot of stuff is, the good thing about a TV series over a movie is you have the time to mm. introduce it. Exactly. A movie's too quick. Unless you know there's, like some people take a book and go, we'll make that into three movies, or else we'll take a book and we'll make that into three movies. That, getting into three movies, you can understand and even that's a bit of a crunch. But if you've got a book like that, get into three movies, and you imagine if they decided now we're going to make Starship Troopers, yeah. the book that size, and then we're going to make it into three movies, people were just looking, what are they going to add? But you can understand that they would need three movies because the first movie might be boring because they might actually in introduce a lot of exposition. Yeah. But within yeah. three movies, you can expand it to... yeah. <laughs> Do well, that, I mean, whereas I mean, a, on a TV show, they can take their time. Yeah. Well, you look at it, I mean, ignore the five and a half hour blockbuster crap that James Cameron and the like comes out with. You look at it rough, roughly, I mean, how long was Starship Troopers the movie? About 90 minutes, roughly? Uh, 90 minutes, roughly. I think it was just oh. under. But the thing is, they reckon the best time for a movie is roughly about... <laughs> An hour and a half, an hour, yeah. minute, an hour and a yeah. half. Whereas, because whereas, after that, people get bored. Yeah. Whereas the the um the epi the, the the episodes for uh, Roughnecks were up approximately thirty minutes. So mm -hmm. you run those together. That's five episodes for an arc. That's two and a half hours. And you, you take out all the you take out the repeats. So you probably got about two hours. Mm -hmm. So they've got more in one of those. Then you've got for the entire, you know, you've got time to build up, and then of course the subsequent ones build up on that. So as you say, you've got like I said, Starship Troopers is one of those books which was probably much better um, suited to being a mini a mini series, yeah. probably for the book itself yeah. than a film. It's just they're talking about Judge Dredd. They're talking about a second movie, Carol. Being there's talks about a, a second movie. Don't think it's going to happen, but they were obviously in talks about the TV show. Mm. Obviously, not a static, not highlighting Judge Dredd. It was basically Mega City One. Yeah, Big Mig was going to be the main character, and it was just about a group of judges. So you could have different judges at different times, and then there would be other groups that could work because they were doing it. It's not a case of they could actually expand it introduce the world because of different types of judges so they could go around that way and they could expand yeah. it in a movie you can't you but, could introduce a character and say oh this is this type of uh, judge and like you look at the the carol or bain one right you've only got the side judge and a street judge that is it yeah the Professor stallone one they had a street judge they had a prison judge Right, so the judge is in the prison, yeah, and that was it. But you also had obviously the the what did you call him? Um, the chief judge and stuff like that. But you didn't have like the med judge, you didn't have the priest judge, you didn't have. Uh, the judge uh, 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 yeah. I will have to jump in here because the Sylvester Stallone one is the most amazing. Film, yes. visually, visually film mm. or filmmaking, because you have Jürgen Prochnow as one yeah. of the bad judges. 
Yeah, and you, 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 you start, have you part start, of the entire universe of the judges. You have the judges' uh, court circle. You have the the, the wasteland. The coast, you, coast you there. Had, you, uh -huh. Yep. Yeah, the, the curse took. You had you, the you lone had walk. all of the dangers. You had the lone walk. You, you even have Max from the seat of. You have yeah. tons of but that's what I'm saying. But, yeah, that, that, that's what I was pointing at. You had the main character, and then you had that one. But you could, you may, you may see this part. You may see that part. You may see that part. But in a movie, they've not got anything other than just introducing it. And that's what I'm saying in the movie. But uh, you, yeah, they, they, this it. is why I'm defending this film because they had. I no think visually, I would like to see Carol Bain's Judge Dredd and Sylvester Stallone's Mega City. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. I oh, okay. I, I I will buy into that, but I'm I'm taking uh, Sylvester Stallone's as a standalone. I'm taking for it as a trying standalone. to the introduce Mega wrong, City but... One. The, the, the whole outline dangerous stuff, the how are you treating judges that have to retire from uh, we misjudged this, we didn't understand this, as to, okay, the, the, and it, it is my major gripe with the film. I've got when two, I've Sylvester got Stallone problems. is stopping the automatic food droid, <laughs> And go is like stop or be killed. I'm just going. Yeah. It's like no, you're going far too deep into the comedy. Yeah, you should it, have yeah. maintained the Sylvester Stallone movie had three problems, but it had three really, really good things in it. The big one, big problem was he took off his helmet. That was the big Set, problem. Setting well, that's problem the, the problem with all. Yeah, set, setting big no, Carla Bain didn't do it, hmm. so it worked. But Sylvester sort of <laughs> took off his helmet, considering the cat, the cartoon never took his helmet. Second big problem was Fergie. Fergie is a great character in the comics, and he Rod Snyder. Oh my god, that is the biggest, most annoying character out there in that movie. And the third problem was that fucking cod piece. Yeah. <laughs> The, the judge's outfit was sort of okay until you got below there. Then it just looked bad. But yeah, but, but, yeah I, I, I agree a hundred percent because for and me, they had good things like they, mean they, the, Angel, judge, the ABC they, Warrior and the Hershey stance. Those three were they, they good. judge for me from comic books, even through TV shows or serials or whatever that most people don't even know about. It is um, sternum and above showing the judge the helmet, the falcon shoulder armor yeah, with the golden the, chain hooking... It's not a falcon, believe another. it or not. It's not a falcon. Uh, it's an, it is an eagle, and it's because it's an American. It was... The well, British people and the American potato, no, potato. No, but, but it, it was the, the, the similar thing. American it's policing the visual presentation the American of what they are. Yeah, I don't care American if it is a banana or a tomato or yeah. a tomato. Yes, but that's it is the that's visual representation. These make the judges. <laughs> yeah. And it is, see, to me, I could I could actually tell them how to actually make a comic book outfit and make it work. But who would listen? Yeah. But the thing That's... is, back to, back to Roughnecks is, the good thing is they didn't do that with this, the Roughnecks, because it was an animated. They could do that. Yeah. You they imagine if they, if they made this TV show live action, then all the Roughnecks are going to look like you see on the TV in the movie, and that wouldn't work the same way. The one thing Whereas, I did, the one thing ahead. was they did, when they did the Jungle Moon campaign, they looked like they're in Vietnam. Mm -hmm. uh, they sort of took off half their armor, and I thought, you know, yeah, 
No, necessarily need to do that because your armour should work in any conditions and it's going to well, be... Well, they did actually remember the bit where Floris was actually claustrophobic and they yeah. said, are you overheating? Turn your air conditioning. So it's an air conditioning battle. Yeah. So it doesn't matter if they were actually in a, uh, they were actually on the minus 40 degree um, Pluto or mm. they were actually in the middle of a desert. <laughs> It should have made zero difference because it's in the air conditioned unit. So the only difference yeah. it would have been is if it was swamps, maybe the, the the weight of it could have got around that. So the by taking that it, part yeah. of it off. Yeah. Mm. So that's the way they could have got around that by saying it's the weight, not to do with the air conditioning or anything like that, but the weight of the suit, they had to reduce the weight, so they had to take parts of the suit off. They can get around that with that because they're not as if they're actually yeah they're using the jetpacks all the time because they can yeah yeah but I mean it's it's the thing was and the, the other thing is uh, the main character or the the viewpoint character interestingly I thought is a reporter. Mm -hmm. He starts off as just is ju just as an assigned reporter. He's young, probably just out of college, university, I suspect. Yeah, he King's was just out of film school. That's what you said. Uh -huh. Just out of film school. Um, but he's, he starts off, so he starts off, he proves to be a liability. And Rajat threatens, Rajat wants rid of him. The troops help him, tra help train him to become... Yeah. He's, he's still a reporter, but he learns to use the um, he learns to use armor and weapons properly. So he learns to actually not to not be a hindrance. Uh, uh, it's it's very cleverly done, I think, now because it's it's I a different point of view. It is, it's basically showing the unit from the aspect of a of a unit. Rather mm -hmm. than of an ind individual, because Starship Troopers was all about the individual, the mobile infantry was about Rico, yeah, and everything else was just all about Rico. Um, all the infant, so Dizzy was all about Rico, even yeah. um, uh, Zim, it was uh, basically it was how Zim affected Rico, yeah, yeah, he was Rico's sergeant, so it's it was mm. things like that. So you didn't have um, Sergeant Smith. Uh, nobody had ever heard of Caption mm. the Bug. It was the one who yeah. knew because of Rico. And it was things like that. Who we had, This who one was actually quite good because it took different characters. And it introduced... <coughs> you obviously saw the characters from the movie. You yeah. could see them. You know that character is... The big blonde guy, Belushi's, Belushi's boy, was it? Buto. Uh -huh. Bu Bu Buto, I think, was in the was in the film. He was this, he was a sergeant, um, whose 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 son joined up in the last in the last campaign. If I remember right, his his lad was yeah, but the guy the guy who played it. I mean, the blonde guy, big blonde guy. Oh, He's, um, Ace, yeah, um, um Busey, Busey, yeah, it, it, yeah, yeah Busey, Ace. Ace. Ace was in the book. Yeah. Um, what's the character? It, it was in also book? in this as well because you see him. He, he, it's obviously not the same people voicing him, but you see the imagery. You know who that's meant to be. Yeah, and that's he was, the good thing about it because they can actually have the imagery, even if the voices are slightly different. You can see who they're meant to be based yeah. on what you've seen in the movie, and that was well, another yeah. good thing. There's a lot of nice things. <laughs> They took this bit from the movie. They took this bit from the the book. They took this bit from other aspects of it, mm. just about where they're combining the two and making it work a bit better. Mm. And that's what I'm saying. I think they actually roughnecks. They they was they it, also it, was it was it better than the movie? No, because the movie is more entertaining in a completely different way. Was it better in the book? No, because the book is more detailed in a completely different way. But it was a good combination of yeah. the characters you saw in the movie it was, and yes. the contents of the book. 
I mean, talk, I mean, you, you you've got for your count, you, you've you've got uh, Rico. Um, Oh, you, 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 you've got Rico there, who's the same character from the book and the film, um, following a similar path, um, similar path career-wise to the book, actually. Uh, you've got, sorry, from the film, not the book. You've got Razak from the book, not the, well, you've, you've got Razak, you've, you've got the officer version of Razak from the book, You never because you never see them at school there. You've got Bruto, Sergeant Bruto, who mm -hmm. is a new character, I think. I don't remember him being. Um, I don't he, remember him being. He's, he certainly does have a few little bits of pieces in there in common with with Ace. You've got Doc, who medic. They didn't have any medics in the um, original series. You've got Goss, who again is a completely, uh, pretty much a completely new character. Um, You've got Ibanez, who I thought they actually bought it quite well. They they managed to actually quite organically bring her in. Why is the pilot in this situation? Which was my my big um, yeah, because you don't have the same pilot and flying everything. Yeah, but this 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 was my big bugbear with space above and beyond. Is why the hell have you got highly trained, highly expensive pilots? Going on special ops missions every flipping story. You've mm -hmm. got Carl, who's a special op. Who's, who's, uh, again, this Carl again, very much more similar to the Carl from the book than the film. Although, unlike the Carl in the book, he actually survives. Uh, and then you've got Higgins, who's the uh, reporter, new character for this one, and Tfai, again, new character for this. So you've got. Um, the main characters from the book and the film are still in it. Um, although, where the, where's the where's the difference? And mostly, I think the film version of the characters, apart from Rico, mm -hmm. who is pretty close to the book characters. <laughs> like I said, I mean, it, it feels nicely because you've got the campaign, so it, it, it's nice. Nice follow through the campaign yeah. and expand, and you get ever so often. Ever so often, you get a character gets taken out, or injured out, or killed. Carl gets injured out, then he comes back again, a different person. Um, I'm almost. I'd almost wonder if whoever wrote that had actually watched Babylon Five, which had been on by then, and with cycles. Um, Death of personality when you imprinted personalities because when Carl comes back later in the series, he's a very different person. Mm -hmm. You've got Barkalo from the um films, although he is his relationship is with Dizzy, yeah, rather than Carmen. <laughs> Yes, you, but in the very first few episodes, he gets basically told off, don't yeah. have to keep him hanging around because as a backup for if Carmen doesn't want you, he's effectively told that early on, which is good. So basically, you get that point. But the, the thing is, they were trying to actually link parts of it to the movie. Yeah. And you know how the movie beginning, middle and end, they're obviously trying to say this happened be before that, but after that yeah. so within here and even at that point so they shouldn't have had a relationship in the uh, Roughnecks because it was meant to be all before the part where they had the relationship in the movie Well, yeah. th th this is the challenging part for me because the book, if you, you actually go to Heinlein's core book yeah. Um, Diaz, uh, Diaz uh, what, is, what is his name? Rico. There's no relationship with anyone. He's just explaining, hey, I signed up for the mobile infantry, did some training, did some uh, schooling, deployed on a couple of missions, got brought back, and uh, because my commanders thought, hey, this guy. Got the talent, 
he needs to go to schooling. He needs to learn a little bit of strategic <laughs> command, um, how to handle human resources, yada, yada, yada. We're sending him back to train, and he does that, and he passes with flying colors. He's sent back out into the field, but almost immediately sent back into school because, holy crap, we do have a leader. Yeah. We have someone with actual commanding presence, knowledge and skill. Let's give him every tool possible before we put him back out in the field. That is what the Heinlein um, diary of uh, him is. <laughs> that is essentially the, the core and heart of it. I said, I'm it shows thing. someone that is worth to be a leader yeah. in <laughs> any army. Yeah, And that's what's good about this is because it actually leads out slowly. Yeah. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I mean, you do you get you, you do get to see him um, promoted up gradually through the ranks. Pardon me. Yeah. I think it, it's because you've got that you you've got the other, <coughs> and because it's longer, you know, you, you can have more expansion on things like even on the bugs on the. You know, every you know, every character gets some development and some story, uh -huh. um, rather than just being there for the back for, for, the, for the background content only. Yeah, and also the because they're having to expand it out, they're having to introduce new things like different types of bugs. So obviously, in the movie, you had the the brain bug, the the what would you call them? So the ones the 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 wee ambassador bugs, the wee bugs that went around with the the brain bugs. No, you 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 you're spot on about the ambassador ones and everything. But Two minutes. the main core story that Heinlein was telling originally, it's that Riku is being put in positions where, okay, it is you and nobody else behind. Because he gets put on the flank. There is nobody on the right step on you. You have to take the decision because you're the last step in our defenses. Mm -hmm. You have to make a decision. And this is why I love the, uh, the Heinlein's version of this. It has nothing to do with the film. Completely, they, they, well, I know the movie it, it and, doesn't it, do, but it shows amazing creative <laughs> thinking. Yeah. And if you go through Heinlein stories <laughs> from this era, have space, it will travel. This uh, young teenager wins a spacesuit on like a radio raffle, and I know us that may be a little bit older, we actually know what that is, but. If someone is the in the twenties listening to the show, you you gonna go radio no, raffle? No, no, and also what, what, what is that? It, it basically, just call it a podcast. They'll know what you're talking about. Oh, uh, it wasn't <laughs> even podcast. It was the, the the stuff you tuned into Saturday morning radio when we were young, and you did crosswords, and then you <laughs> lifted your phone and you did the spin wheel dial. To try to yeah. dial in the quickest that you had the correct spelling yeah. to the crossword. That is have spacesuit will travel. Yeah. That is where that came from. Mm -hmm. I think it is. I mean, the the main thing, Heinlein's main um, main message, if you will, from the book was service i mean the, the the fact that service guarantees citizenship has become a meme really should piss for home and off because it's come from his film it's not it, it's the ideas in the book but it's come from the film but his idea of of putting yourself in the way of, of in the way of danger for others you know of 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 not being selfish 
he's a mate in the book. He's a, he's of service and of being reliant <laughs> and earning your earning the right to, to be an adult if you like to be a citizen. Yeah. So unlike now a days where they actually want everybody to be at, treated like kids, in the book they basically had to earn the right to be not treated as kids. Yeah. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. But the, so, you get, yeah, and it's so again. I mean, because we said. I mean, the thing is that the series, because it was a kid series, and it was made at a time when, amazing as it may seem to Disney, you don't put political messaging in kid shows. Yeah, they didn't have the political messaging in it. Do you know the funny part is about uh, Starship Troopers? Is right, people see. It's fascist because <sighs> of they don't they, they, they think it's fascist because of the promotion of war. Whereas, in effect, what they don't like about it is they, they think it's fascist because you have to earn the right to do yeah. something rather than automatically being given everything, you have mm. to earn it all. So, if you want to actually get those going to politics or teach or do that, you can't just automatically get it. You have to earn the right to do these jobs. You can get other jobs, but there's certain jobs you have to earn the well, right there's, there's, to. You might not get them, but you still have to earn the right well, to get them. There's, there's something that, that the film accidentally shows off very well, <laughs> is that the society in which Starship Troopers is set is so comfortable that you can be a massive success like Johnny's dad and not be a citizen. You don't yep. need to be. You, you, you don't can need be a citizen to succeed. You just need to be for certain things. And that's the difference. Yeah, and that's what I'm saying. What that's the, saying. The, the, it's, you can get people who will go out now and work their asses off and get the stuff they want. But some people will say, no, because, you know what I mean? He, you know I mean, his, his, it's like Terry Pratchett. You've got the, the, uh, the, 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 the Sewer King, uh, basically, he owns all the Dunnikin, di- he employs all the Dunnikin divers, he clears all the, 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 sh- the shit and all that. He, yeah. he, he refines it all and, and does a lot of stuff. But it doesn't matter how rich he is, certain parts of society won't accept him because of the job he's doing. Yeah. And you get that now. You imagine me could become a millionaire, but there'll be certain people who'll look at this as to say, he, he, the way he talks, the way he looks, no, it doesn't, it doesn't fit into our society. But you get that anywhere. Yeah. You get somebody who, when I was a kid growing up, wearing T-shirts like this, you would go and sit there and look at you as if to say, geeks, geeks, geeks are there. Yeah. Because you don't fit in with mm. our look. And it's that type of thing. You see it in American, mo- American teenage movies about high school. They're, they're basically how we grew up. But we didn't grow up like that because we didn't have those groups. Mm. We used to used to have everybody, so you'd have the guys playing football, but they would be the same guys you could maybe sit next to uh, doing something else the next day. They didn't think me. The only ones you actually had were the smokers. And then you uh, had but, uh, but we, the... We were church here in Europe because we never had a football or sports jockey superstardom. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. In our schools, we didn't either because in America, you see... All these different groups. I mean, you you watch an American high school stuff from a way in the past to now. The high the the jocks were always the bullies. The nerds were always the ones getting bullied. The the cheerleaders were always the bitchy ones and stuff like that. There were always all these groups. Whereas over here, the nearest you got to groups was the smokers, the yeah. bully, and his pals, and that was it. Everybody else just basically got on with it. <laughs> Well, that's, I think that's something again that, that they did quite well. Um, it again with Fi is that if they outgroup and they brought him into the group, he, he earned his place in the group. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's, it, I think that the, the, the odd thing is that the, the one difference, I think the major difference between the book and the film 
and the series is the series doesn't do flashbacks. Um, so effectively, the series well, they do have that one one set. Which one? Trackers. Was it not trackers? Oh, yeah, no, yeah, no, no. I'm saying if if you you go the, the basic campaigns because you've also uh, got the, the basic track. campaigns are just yeah. campaigns as they're yeah. happening. Yeah, the, 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 the trackers are clip shows. But what I mean is, as opposed to where both the book and the film starts off, it flashes back a bit, starts forward. Mm-hmm. You start you effect, effectively. You've got um, the you, you, you've got the main heroes basically starting off reasonably shortly out of basic. So they come out of basic, they've yeah. gone off, and they gradually follow up through. And they, yeah, you know, because they are the they are the rookies in this. Mm. Yeah, like that. Like you you see them gradually. So you and you you're could... right. They don't actually do flashbacks in that respect. It's just a case of how it happens. Yeah, I mean, you, how you're a man look... on the ground, how it's happening. Yeah, I mean the, the the thing which also gives a very organic and a very effective way of having voiceovers mm-hmm. because. It's the reporter that's doing all the narration. And I mean, occasionally you even see him literally doing it on screen as doing a report. There's one or two things where you see him setting up and he's actually dictating a report. You know, so you you get the narration and the the, the exposition in there Mm -hmm. very cleverly worked in where it makes sense within the storyline. Yeah. And you've got, I mean, the the as I said, the, there's there's some differences. I think with the it, it doesn't fit. It's definitely its own thing because it doesn't. It fits in some ways. It fits more with the book, for example, with Carl. <laughs> Carl is very much much more book Carl than he is film Carl. Um, but Dizzy isn't even the character in the book. Well, well, no, she's she's completely different. D- D- Dizzy isn't Isabel Flores. DC is a is a guy's nickname. Uh-huh. Um, and a complete, so effect effectively, completely different character film, film only. But you could almost see it as, in some ways, filling in the gaps as where they start off here. But they've got a different story um, timeline to it. So it starts off yeah. they discover the piano because they think the bugs start off on Pluto. They eventually discover the bug's home planet. They think they've wiped out the bug's home planet, and then something gets down to Earth. Um, and then they didn't make the last series. I have no idea. It's something about production problems. I've no idea why you've made 40 flipping, 36, 36 episodes plus four um, clip shows. Why not make those one extra five, four, four episodes that were planned anyway? You know, oh, so frustrating. Yeah. But it doesn't, but it's, the, the, the good thing is they're done in such a way that it's not cliffhanger ending. It's not space and above and beyond how many of them are going to survive. <laughs> it's this campaign's finished. The next campaign's about to start, but we haven't written it. So it's not a problem. You, you, you can watch it. Um, yeah. With that, you, know, you, you can watch it and not be not have it ruined by the fact that, what now? Yeah. And that, I think, works as well because you're actually, you don't, because it's animated, it doesn't matter. They could kill everybody off. Yeah. Because... The, it's not being that the voice actor suddenly are employed. The voice actor just does another voice and does one of the new recruits. So yeah. that, with an animated one, it makes it harder to perceive what's going to happen. Obviously, because it's made for not kids, but younger yeah, adults. Yeah. It was basically, they're not going to actually butcher everybody, but mm. people could have got killed off easily. And yes, the, the, the actor behind it 
who comes back as a, a slightly different voice and a different character, yeah. which in the TV show and live action doesn't happen. That's why a lot of people, you know, they're a star, they're not going to get killed. Yeah. So very rarely that happens. And nowadays, you already know it well before. So like when Tasha Yar died, people went, oh, because they didn't know Tasha Yar was going to die. Yeah. But in this, if any one of the characters was going to die, you would know because the oh, actor would still be there. The, act, the voice actor would still be there. You don't know if the character there voicing is getting killed off. And that's a good thing because you are... <laughs> You're basically perceiving it as it happens. Yeah, unless okay, unless they're played by or voiced by Sean Bean, in which case it's a case of okay, yeah. how many episodes are they going to survive? I've, th- I've just noticed that one other thing I noticed on that one is is that we're talking about the ships. They're based on the Valley Forge for most of the series, uh-huh. which was the first ship, if I remember right, that I won in the in 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 the book. Um, Johnny um, doesn't go straight. Johnny uh, doesn't go straight into the Roughnecks. He goes to, and I can't remember the. He goes to another unit first. They get pretty much wiped out, and then he gets he gets transferred to the Roughnecks, and he's he's partially accepted by the Roughnecks because he. Um, I think it might have been dizzy actually in the book. The bearing in mind again, um, they've had ju- they've got a jump under their belt, so they're not raw recruits. Yeah. Um, but the fact they go they go from the Valley Falls to the Roger Young, um, whereas in the rough in Rough Next series, I say in 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 the film they're on the Roger Young, which then gets blown out of space, uh, and in this series they're on the Valley Falls most of the time. Or, Dropping from the Valley Force most of the time. Yeah. But that's what I'm saying. I, that, that. See, the thing is, right, you know, I, I'm a big Judge Dredd fan. So I've read the comics nah, really? and I've read the books and I've seen the TV shows, the two movies. Mm. The thing is, I see them as completely different. I yeah. see them as different mediums. And it's the same idea. The book and the I know a lot of people. I know a few people. I wouldn't say a lot, but I know a few people who dislike the movie just because it's so different from the book. Mm. And I know I I know more people who like the movie despite the fact it's different from the book because it's to them it's just taking the basics from the book and actually just went a completely different route so they didn't actually even try and pretend it was actually no this is what the book says we're just yeah. it. they basically just went in a complete side swipe to it and yet there is still people who see the two of them like both of them for their own media and I yeah. I fit into that because I see yeah, I too. like the book I like I love the movie but I love the TV show, and the three of them are different mediums. They are, yes, that definitely. Is. And I do like them for that because if it was a live action one, it would be different because they wouldn't be able to do half the effects because yeah. it would be a TV show. Animation, watch. I mean, they could probably do it nowadays. You could probably get uh, get it done. They could get ones that look like it, it would still all be green screen, and the actors. Yeah. Would uh, that's why I like the X-Men cartoons better than the movies because the X-Men cartoons can do things that even with yeah. modern technology they can't get away with and it wouldn't look as good. Yeah. So like Mr. Mm-hmm. Elastic, yes, in the TV show, the him stretching, re- Reed Richards stretching and things like that. No, the, the, the actual cartoon way they did it looked far better because oh, yeah. It was a cartoon. They could do anything in a cartoon. Mm. And that's why I like the animation series, like the um, uh, X-Men and stuff like that. Just because different mediums have got different strengths. 
I think this animated has got a better <laughs> sense because it allowed them to have all the the drop ships. It ha- allowed yeah. them to have the the marauders. It allowed them to have the outfits. It allowed all these parts with it. Whereas you imagine them all dressing up like Iron Man. Mm. The outfits yeah. would be um, Robocop clunky. Yeah, they would. So it'd have to be. Yeah, because to make it look like that. But it would be too clunky because I was watching the article. Um, it was all about the making of Robocop. And when they gave the initial outfit, it, they told him what the outfit was being. So he practiced so he could move around to make him look more robotic. And when they got the actual outfit, it was it was clunkier. And they said, and Paul Verhoeven said um, said to him that no, was it no Paul Verhoeven? What my fucking saying? Was it? Was it Paul Verhoeven that did Robin Copper? Oh yeah, I think so. Right, but he basically he rushed through the shooting for the first couple of days, and it did not work. Even though the actor that played Murphy in Robocop says, I need time to actually learn how to move in this outfit. And he says, in hindsight, afterwards, they went back to him and says, sorry, you were right. We'll stop filming for a couple of days so you can go away and learn how to move in it. And he says he did. And so when he's moving around and he's turning around to shoot, he looks more robotic because he's got he practiced in the outfit. Because they practiced in a smaller outfit before, mm. the concrete outfit didn't work. So you imagine a live action where they all look like Robocop type outfits. Yeah. See how clunky that would be? Or else would they be all in CGI and then look as if they're all wearing Iron Man outfits? Because they'll still have to do all the, they would still be doing the running and that. And if they put these big clunky outfits on them with CGI, it would look off because they're running in a different way and the mm. bigger outfit would just make it look obvious it is just CGI'd whereas this the CGI can act it's all part and parcel they can be they can run the clunky slow jumpy yeah. whereas if they did that in real life and then CGI'd over the top with the clunky suits it would look off because you realize it's like you look at now modern action movies, like you you can see them. Somebody will fall over, a big explosion, and something will miss them by a hair's breadth. It will bounce off the the uh, the wall beside them, or it will bounce off the the grass in front of them, and they don't move. Yet this big enormous wheel tight, like an airplane propeller, misses them by a fraction because yeah. the guy makes it look good but they've not reacted to it because, or else they go, <gasps> as if that's all they're going to do with this thing, piling past their, their face and just missing them and bouncing off. It's that aspect of it I don't like with live action with CGI because they make it unrealistic because people think, oh, this looks good, but they can't get it right because yeah. it's either too close and too close shave or the movements are are slightly off or how they were doing like um Kong, the bit with the dinosaurs with the Jack Black Kong I hate because of the way I think my dog's trying to get out of the room and he can't get out of the room. <laughs> I, I think that um this series is the media the, 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 the CGI is the best medium for doing this. Yes, it is. Um, That's exactly it, what I was saying. Yeah. I, 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 I went around about we. Yeah. I mean, but, but I mean, yeah. it, it, it's it's not only that, it's 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 not just it works in this medium. It's the best medium for doing it. Cartoon, yeah. I think, would be too silly. It would be too cartoon unless they did it, unless they did it in more of a darker <laughs> shade. Yeah, um, the 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 cartoons would be too bright. It'd be like watching Power Rangers. It would be too bright. They would obviously yeah. use too straight. The colours would be too striking. and they would have to use a very deep, a darker, muddier palette. Yeah, and, and cut- that being a cartoon that Disney always come across well. Yeah, cut because cartoon is cartoon. <coughs> cartoons are the one thing is 
they're obviously two dimensional. <laughs> yes. Um, whereas CGI, like, this works so much better because the CGI allows you it to, to look three dimensional. Yes. So you know you've got them, and you for this sort of thing, I think you you want you want that. As I said, I mean. It's it's the best compromise, and that's why I say. I mean, modern modern CGI, <laughs> um, I think would would make it would be even better. You know, I mean, it would it would be a tighter and cleaner <laughs> look to it. You look yeah. at what you were talking about. You look online on YouTube for um, some of the Warhammer Forty K, yeah, stuff they've done, and that looks mm. amazing. Even though you know fine well when I was playing with the figures. The guys wouldn't be able to run around in that because it's too. It's like they're, they're wearing bell bottom trousers. You know what I mean? And yeah. Run funny, but yeah. and the CGI they've got it just looks really good and it works better. Mm. Yeah. So yeah, I do agree with that. If they could actually redo this with modern CGI. Mm. I would give it a watch. 59th Legion, the Roughnecks. 59th yes. Legion, of Star Roughnecks of Starting. Yeah. Roughnecks and um, Indomitable. Yeah. yeah. I'm not. I'm, I'm, I'm not. I, my, as I understand it, the new version of it, they're actually the fig. They come up partly because the figures are more realistic proportions, but. Um, yeah, but no, I'm, see, I don't like the new stuff. I, I stopped playing it a while back. 40k, I stopped playing years ago. Uh, well, they, they, I stopped playing when they went to the mm. Age of Sigma. I didn't like. Well, I the think they've, they've not now gone to both. Back gone to the next one. So I'm already two behind. Yeah, so my gone, figures, so, uh, I, I used to have a Bretonian army and yeah. I loved that. And then when they did the new rules, I didn't like the new rules. So I stopped playing. So. Well, I think, I think in 40k, haven't they? They've gone back. They, they started off great. And aren't they now on 41k and 30k? Because 30k is the Horus Heresy stuff, mm -hmm. I think. And then yeah, they're now on other lot of newer stuff. stuff in. We got hover tanks and the tech's only been suddenly improved massively. Whereas yeah. part of the setting was a the tech was very rare. I don't, I don't know. I'm I've I've seen a few videos, and all videos, and most of it, not not that many because I just yeah. I've, I stopped playing 40k years ago. Mm -hmm. I, I sold all my figures for my fantasy mm -hmm. in 40k roughly about the same time yeah. because they changed the rule for four sets, and I just did not like the rules. I think the rules they had were really oh. good, and then suddenly the 40k you're rolling about a hundred dice. I don't want to actually. Yeah, and stuff like that. I like the way they were doing it. So you mm. had the attack, you know, you had the armor save, you had a ward save, and mm. yeah, things like that. But suddenly, oh well, he's got fifteen attacks, and you get, and you're talking about. You watch some of the, you watch some of the old forty k uh, tabletop games, and some yeah. of the new forty k tabletop games, and they're so different. The amount of dice you're rolling. Yeah, but yeah. I, I, I did see. I was watching um, someone watching on. They said. They they had they'd actually got an old there was an out of print Starship Troopers miniatures game and I'm not sure if that was um if there is anywhere you'd be able to find somebody's got it on YouTube. Yeah. I'm just I'm just wondering because I don't I don't I can't remember if that was um if it was um Film based, or if it was anything, was anything to do with the TV series? Because the you can guarantee it would be, it would, uh, if anything, it would be the TV series because yeah. the film based it would, it would be film based on the fact that somebody's seen Warhammer 40k fighting the Tyranids. And, yeah, well, that's and, that's that's very much what the what the computer games look like. Yeah. Uh, But that's what I'm saying. So, uh, but I think if anything, it would look better if they were actually doing it via the TV show because they've got what? the units and set up and the tech. yeah, you. I mean, you've definitely got um, you've got <coughs> excuse me, you've got a much wider selection of of figures for starters. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. 
So yes, you could have had a generic mobile infantry, but you wouldn't have it the same way. So they would all look like the they would look like Imperial Guard in 40k. Whereas now you've got them, they can look more like the Space Marines. Yeah. So the outfit looks so you could actually have it, it the, them looking better like that. That's what I mean. Rather than just looking like an, a, a bog standard Imperial Guard from Warhammer 40k. Mm. Because the outfits are enough different that you could get away with having those figures that look different, but you could understand the similarities between the two. Whereas if you had them the way they were in the movie, you're effectively playing with 40k figures. Yeah. Yeah, the, the Imperial Guard 40k figures. So that was a standard look. Because you look at the, the figures there, you could actually see Starship Troopers look on them. So yeah, you could oh, yeah. your you could create your Starship Troopers Rico and all that from Imperial Guard figures easily. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I did find some, but I only very small pictures, but look, some of them look unfortunately a very small pick, the one I just managed to find, but it, that it looked like it was very much it looked like it was the Roughneck Squad. Um unfortunately I can't find a decent where's I can guarantee it would be it would be the TV show. Yeah. Yep. Because they because they were they they were clearly in Roughnecks TV show armor with um with their visors up. Unfortunately I can't find a decent size picky of it. It was like two hundred and something so uh, <laughs> Yeah, I can see. I can see the book. Yeah, you get the book easily, mm -hmm. and you can, there was video games. Yep. Yeah. Well, there's a new one out recently. I know Archer's done a couple of things. I think I don't know right now. <laughs> Is that a better size one? Uh, oh, you know, that's spacecraft. I thought that was a uh, their outfit. I'm just actually there. You go. There's one. I think it's basically this is one. I'm just actually going to share this. That one there. See it. K12, it's got on the hat. Yeah, it's like, and accordingly, that, that is a Starship Troopers Invasion and you Starship Trooper Mobile Infantry RPG. Ah. So that looks like a figure from it. It doesn't look like an um an artist's rendition. It looks like a painted figure, taking no. a picture of a painted figure, just to be the gun looks and stuff like that. Yeah. So, but no, I was looking for other ones to see if there was eight. Ah, yeah, wait a minute, is that? Ah, yeah, there, you there you go. There's a, that's definitely one. There's definitely one. There's definitely one. Hold on. Feature this screen. My mouse is playing silly buggers. Seems to found the same one I found. Is that one? Uh no, that looks like the Marauder suits, doesn't it? Um, yes, it does. It's basically, it's called Starship Troopers RPG Star Destroyer Net. That's where it's the website brought where they got it. It doesn't give me that, another information. That is definitely the series. There you go. Uh, Starship Troopers Arachnids. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Was that? Was that? I'll make her in I'll again. Her in. But there you go. Starship Troopers are acting. It, so. And I think there's a better look at somebody was selling on eBay. They're nice figures, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's the arachnids. I can't find any of. The unit. 
there's that one. The Marauders, there's one, it's the Marauders. So, you, so there is. Yeah, I'm just trying to see if there's. Oh, Mongoose, Starship Troopers, Mobile Infantry, Power Suits. Here you go. So that's another one. So as you can see, there is ones out there. Yeah, yeah. That one, I, that one I've got there. I, I hate hearing myself echo. But um, yeah, that's from someone who's sent a um, Starship Troopers miniatures game production two thousand and five to two thousand and seven. Yeah. Apparently, that's that's the ones that I had on screen. That's the same yeah. ones. Yeah. Yeah. So, because they're obviously unpaid, but I'm only looking at the helmet, the, the basic yeah, the that's, bit that's, where they've got the yellow cap. Yeah, and well, that's clearly Rico on the left, and that, so I think that skin is out of focus in the back as well. Uh -huh. That's the um, reporter um, in the middle. Henry? Is it in Henry? The middle. Uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> But yeah, but that's the same. That looks like the same outfit because the one I shared has got a similar idea, but um, that one there, right? Yeah. Basically, that's him um, there because he, the one of the first weapons he used was the yeah. triple grenade launcher. Yeah. And as you can see on this one, these have got the same hoods, the same yep. shoulder pads, and the same visor as the ones you showed. Yep. Because you can see they're not very well painted, but you can see the, sim the same look to them. So it's the same models, or the same set, as it were. Yep. So now I'm going to stop sharing these two now. Yeah. But yeah, so there is actually figures out there, so you can make your own Johnny Rico, but I'll just stick with my wee Johnny here. <laughs> so, well. So, what would you actually give this one out of 10? And I like doing my reviews, but I like actually people scoring it and why they would score it such. Oh, uh... Very diff it, it's difficult because it's very difficult to separate it out. I think I would, it would probably be high eight or nine because it was very much, I think it very much had the um, feel of the original book. Because, because because it was made for kids, it still had some really good, good storylines, even though it was made for young adults as well. I would say probably an eight, maybe a nine, I'm not sure. I hate doing these things, you know that. Yeah, I, see, I think I would actually quite agree with the scoring and stuff like that because mm -hmm. I would say probably an eight. The things that let it down was because the graphics are of the time, you see them dated. Yeah. But you can't really blame that. The things not... that I would say just let it down is probably a wee bit too dark in times. So it was a wee bit more difficult, but that could just be of the time I get as well. But I think they had it at the right range, age range. So they didn't yeah. go too young, so make it silly, like yeah. um, uh, Power Rangers. They didn't go too dark and make it very gritty, like um, 40k. Mm. <laughs> thing because you can't well you can actually yeah you might have your kids playing 40k with you but some of the 40k videos out there when they let kids watch no, they not. ultra violent and you're basically they're designed for a different age range and we're aware of that but I think they hit the note of the the bugs getting fried and shot no problem so they had still that part there but you didn't see late like, in the movie people getting ripped apart yeah, you knew people were dying because they constantly <laughs> told you X amount of people were sent in and only four days they came out and stuff like that. Things like that. 
and I did like this, so I would definitely give this an eight. And the only things is it's time when it was made. Yeah, so the, the, I mean, it's basically the graphics weren't up to its snuff. But yeah, I would like to see it re-rendered. I mean, the the the, the other thing is that yes, I'm talking 40k terms. What it did have in its favour, yes. The cap troopers mobile infantry are supposed to be Astartes, not Katachan jungle fighters. Mm -hmm. They're not yeah. supposed to, you know, they are not supposed the, 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 the Imperial Guard are what they are. And as you know, as, as I've said a few people have said you know, there's millions and millions and millions of them. There's maybe a million total of Astartes throughout the entire Imperium. But the, star, the Starship Troopers are supposed to be armed, armoured infantry in battle suits. So mm -hmm. they are supposed to be a started for, for in 40k terms. Whereas in the film they were black, they were they were Imperial Guard level kit and specifically level armament, which is why they got ripped apart so easily and so on. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And um, it is, this basically is, and this shows you the difference because obviously yeah. they come up against both. This one has got one thing above what the movie had. I, at least a couple of times they ran out of bullets. Yeah. <laughs> and that, whereas in the movie, obviously they never ran out of bullets. And this one no. they did. But the amount they could fire, considering the size of the magazine, was very futuristic. Shall we say very yes. futuristic? Five hundred rounds in the magazines, uh, considering it was only about that size. Mm. Very futuristic, but you get away with that because it's futuristic. So I mean, is the weapon if, just actually firing pellets? Yeah, I mean, if, if, if they're magnetic flechette guns, then yeah, because a flechette's basically a needle. Uh -huh. You know, twenty, thirty needles in the size of one bullet. You know, yeah. because because it's literally a sliver of metal. So yeah, depending upon what what, what the weaponry is, and I think and they do that. Some did they actually at one point they had improvements in the weaponry in the series as well. I think didn't they? They did later on, but yeah, um, they come back on the again, proving that with longer storytelling time, they can actually show the logical development. Yeah. Because um, when they came up against the flying bugs, they were saying yeah. they could fire all they want, but it did nothing. Lasers, uh, they, uh, they could actually get the occasion, but all it did is attract them and stuff like that. So yeah. they were basically saying they needed different weapons, different weapons for different bugs. So, yeah, you could actually rip one of those bugs apart. One or two or three of you shooting at it could take it apart quickly. But otherwise, you're having to empty a whole magazine into it just to stop one. Um, and uh, that's okay if you've only got one coming at you. But if you've got 5,000 of them coming at hmm. you, then shooting one at a time like that is not going to actually be advantageous. So, but yes, and it does actually increase the... Because you would actually want bigger weapons each time yeah. you would. And, they, and there's... I mean... The the bugs in the arachnids, the bugs in in roughnecks are very definitely tyranids. Well, well no, that no, they're not. They are more tyranid, like this, because you go to the water planet and you get bugs that are aquatic. They they actually have. They seem to be able to adapt the bugs to the environments they're in. Yeah. You know, but the thing more, is, that's no, why I think this something these stuff. people should watch because it doesn't just give you the bugs, the one or yeah. two or three types of bugs you saw. Right, in the movie you saw the bog standard bugs, then you saw the wee teeny um, escort bugs for the, the brain yeah. bug, plus I'm you trying. did see one or two flying bugs, whereas in this, the oh, no, sorry, you also saw the missile bugs, the ones that... Yeah, the plasma bugs, I'm trying to... What I'm, I'm trying to my bank the pilot pilot bug like the pilot fish that you get get around sharks. You can try Aye, the the Mori, the Mori, yeah. Fight, the Mori. Yeah, you uh, seem to have a t you have the attendant bugs around the brain bugs. <laughs> yeah, but that's what I'm saying. So you saw a couple of different types, but in this one it actually expands it because 
bugs are bugs. There's thousands of different types of bugs, even yeah. though the ones that look similar are slightly different. Yeah. So you could have a spider or a spider. I mean, one yeah. spider actually might kill you, and the other one might kill you faster. Yeah. So yeah. You, with this, you see different bugs. So you see even similar bugs, but slightly different colours, and they're more deadly. Yeah. And they, and they do that. So that's why I think this one is definitely one to watch. I would definitely get some. If you're going to get, if you like Starship Troopers, give Roughnecks. There's 44 episodes or eight campaigns. Yeah. It depends how you get it. DVD usually split it into mm. campaigns. So you can buy a DVD with Pluto and it's the first five or six episodes. Yeah. So it basically is set around that way, and it is actually very well done. And it, the it does. animation is a bit clunky because of its age. You are looking at computer graphics from 1999. 1990 to 2000. I think yeah. It, 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 so it it's 22-year-old, the animation yeah. in it. At the time, it was, it was top of the, the, the range. <laughs> now... Considering what you can see out there, it also it also depends on what resolution video you yeah. get. Or well. well, if you're watching it in a big screen <laughs> and you've got really bad resolution, it'll yeah, be they want to watch it in four eighty p on a big screen. Yes, and um, what you want to do is higher resolution you get, and yeah. you I mean, not necessarily mm. a bigger screen. The smaller screen, the higher resolution will even give you better. But yeah, you need to have a decent. It needs to have. Decent lighting because it can look clunky, and it's even the best uh, graphics you can get it under. It is twenty-two year old. The graphics, so yep. don't expect the most modern, up to the fake technology type graphics. It's not. It's not Iron Man. Hmm. Yeah, it is. So you're getting graphics of its time. However, it, still the movie. The interesting. Storylines, yeah, it and it, it and unlike some, uh, in fact, unlike quite a few series, it is definitely best watched in order because well, a a you've you see got progression, yeah, a you've got five episodes because it was originally designed to be done weekly, five episodes. <sighs> you know, it's not worth watching. So episode one, two. Then watch episode 27. Well, it's a completely different campaign and back to episode three or anything like that. Mm -hmm. And B, okay, there is a progression through them. So you get a lot, for example, in the latter half and the latter in the, in the latter campaigns, you've got the skinnies are on board, so you've got to fight in there. Yeah. The first two that, three that's campaigns. A, that's another that's, that's that's thing. Another thing. <laughs> it's not episodic. It's not it no. is a storyline. So yeah. it's it's not it's less Star Trek, uh, Star Trek. And it's more Babylon Five. Yes, definitely. It's so, it's a serial. It, it is a TV show. We I would recommend myself. Mm. What about you, Jim? Any thoughts on it? Or oh, is he falling asleep again? No, he's still probably eating. Oh yes, he's true. He was having dinner. Yeah. He was having his dinner. But I would definitely say people should get a hold of this if they can get the whole forty-four episodes. If they can pick up campaigns, even if they pick up campaign number three. It's not going to be a major issue because they can still enjoy the campaign from start to finish of the campaign. Yeah. It's not going to be a major problem that they've not seen one or two. So they could pick up the campaign. But, yeah, you can't watch episode one from one campaign and episode six from the other campaign and episode two from the other campaign. You can't watch them out of order. You need to watch them in order. And yeah. the DVDs come in um, campaigns. So the first DVD, six episodes, or five episodes, two and a half hours, and it will have the Pluto campaign. Mm. And it is, the biggest problem I can see is just the fact is it's dated technology it's run by. Yeah. But maybe yeah. they'll have a, a re-rendering at some point. Well, it would be nice if someone picked it up and actually did the last four or five Five episodes, I mean, but them apparently they're in production, they're just never filmed. So, presumably, the script and storyline that's out there, yeah. So, it'd be nice to upgrade, yeah. upgrade it and do the last ones, yeah. That would be nice. Do what they did with Doctor Who, actually, just redo the, the finished ones, even if it's done it by 
two D two D animation and do it in a darker look, maybe like they did with the Web of Fear, or not the Web of Fear. What was the one they did? Um, the Doctor Who ones. It actually was done, and it was quite a dark palette they used. So they could get away with that if mm. they want to. Yeah. To make it a two D just to finish off the story, but 2D graphics are still good nowadays. Yep. If, they use a, if they use more Dark Knight rather than Power Rangers colour schemes, they can yeah. Yeah, so, definitely. So what we'll do is we'll start finishing off. This weekend we've got Let's Talk Geeky, which is going to be in a tight timeline in Wednesday, uh, sorry, Saturday. Very um, tight timeline on Wednesday because it's on Saturday. <laughs> yes, uh, very, very tight. Uh, but uh, Saturday, I need to finish no later than 11. I need to be actually out of here by 11. So it will be a very tight schedule on Saturday. But we're back on Saturday. Let's talk geeky. So, Colin, you on anything up until uh, before then? Might pop on, hopefully. If the uh, nerd father's doing the stream on Friday, I might well be. I'll hope you'll be on there. But other than I'm that, I'm hoping to be on that. But I'm, I, I don't know if I'm actually going to make it because I've yeah. got stuff on this Friday. Right oh, fair there. enough. But yeah. there's also we'll be soon starting Cattles and Crusades. Yeah, I was going to say that's Friday week, isn't it? It's um, Friday the sixteenth. Yeah, that'll be fun. Um, uh, but that's on the uh, Tabletop Junkies channel. And it starts live at 11 p.m. UK time. It's not midnight, one or the other, I think. Uh, something sure. like that. It's yeah, I know it's, it's quite a late, UK yeah. Time. So that is 5 PST or whatever it is, or whatever you, you US viewers uses your... Fake time. time yeah. Your fake time, yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. so we've got things coming up over the next weeks. And what's on for next Wednesday? Can anybody remember? Because I can't. I'm only kidding. I've actually, I, I've got. I've You've got, got the list. For next Wednesday, it's. Are you taking it twice? It's Enemy Mine. Ah, I have to rewatch that, yes. Yeah, and I'm looking forward to rewatching that. I've not seen that for years. No, me neither. Enemy Mine. <laughs> the week mm. after that is Muppet Christmas Carol, but Enemy Mine. Oh, I'm looking forward to the one between Christmas and New Year. It's a wonderful life. The one that people are actually trying to get cancelled because it's very toxic. Oh, Dick, what is so toxic about... Oh, hold on a second, let me guess. And Angels. It's got names in it and it's uh, mostly white characters and it's all about the redemption of a man. Did, did, did you see some idiots apparently including... I can't remember... Was it the uh, Princess Bride? No, the Princess no. Bride. Love Actually. Love Actually, yes. <laughs> Including, I can't remember, I, I won't say who, which was entered, because I honestly can't remember if it was the one whose name's coming to mind or not. Apparently Jeremy, losing it. Jeremy something or other? Jeremy Vine, I think, apparently losing it. Because yeah, it's, I, oh, saw that. I saw say, that. Clip. Will you? Shut up. See, that's why when people say you shouldn't have watched this movie, you shouldn't have watched that movie, bug off. If I like a movie, I like a movie. I don't care yeah. what people think about it. I, I like Blazing Saddles. I'm not going to actually oh, say yeah. I don't. I like Wonder Woman, the Linda Carter Wonder Woman. I like that. Yep. So I don't care if somebody says, I, but that's um, a strong female. Uh-huh. It's Wonder Woman. Two bloody yeah. right, it's a strong, which is meant to be. It's but the it's original like that, so when they say you, know, you shouldn't right. watch something, if they turn around and say we're no meaning for you, then I'll just no watch it and I don't care if I like it or not because you're telling me nowadays I have to like things that I'm uh, people that me are in. Once you've got a Scottish bald guy with a beard who's in his 50s who sits in his room, then I'll sit and watch it. Other than yeah. that, then it's never. Oh, that, I never. I never see myself in any movie. Believe it or not, I don't think I'm James Bond. I don't think I'm Sean Connery. That's that's that's. I that's might be Scottish, but I don't think I'm Sean Connery. I don't watch movie thinking I want to be him. I well, that's watch a movie thinking I would love to be him, but I don't yeah. think I am. Well, that's why I'm not going to watch Wakanda Forever. I'm not. I'm, 
I'm, yeah. I'm not a brat. And if, in fact, I'm you probably know, not going to watch any the, any of the Disney movies because I'm well, not a cartoon character. Any of the Disney I'm movies and the Marvel stuff. I'm not a superhero. Do you know what one I'll watch and wish I was him? Blade. Um, Blade. Uh -huh. The Blade yeah. trilogy. Yep. Wesley Snipes. Fucking kicked ass. Uh, if I was going to be anybody, I would want to be that tough and that skilled with a sword. <laughs> Yeah, and I'm no, I would be the one going ah, as I'm running away. <laughs> oh, maybe not. You did, did you? There's, um, you, you really can't win with some people because people are whinging, they're whinging about anything. You can guarantee yeah. they'll whinge yeah, about roughnecks, even though it's got males yeah. and females in it. They've already yeah. complained about Starship Troopers because of this and because of that. And it's sorry, is that not what we uh, even then in the in the, when, when was that? 80, 84? What? Sorry, cut up a second. Was Starship Trooper? I think it was 90s. 90, 94, maybe. Yeah, maybe, but yeah. Actually, it, then, I, think it was, I think it was a couple of years before, so it might have been 97, 98. They're, 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 they're whinging about the fact that the black characters in Wednesday started off as being mean well no they're bloody teenagers and then yeah. they're and then the best bit they're complaining that one of the one of the one of the black families runs a runs an amusement park about the pilgrims i know that's thinking that's people actually got jobs believe it or not people will take a job no matter if they dislike it because see that the the green is, stuff, that's the only color people care about it's, it's not that it's ridiculous it's because there's it, it's because you watch this, the characters no actually most of them turn around to be if you actually watched the episodes of the series yes they start like that they're teenagers at a bloody school and they turn out, and they have this thing called character development, and they actually turn out to be on the hero, on the heroine side. Yeah, and that's the point. They, they, you're not allowed to actually have any faults at all. But yeah. it's the same idea. That, I mean, I'm watching one of my favourite... Would I say favourite? It's definitely got one of my favourite characters in it. Because I hate the main character in it. I'll, I'm watching, re watching Psych. I'm going to cut, I'm going to start watching it again, I think. Yeah. But mm. my favourite character in it isn't Sean. It's Gus. Hmm? I think Sean is the most annoying character in that whole bloody movie. And I don't find him funny because I've had too many people who act like that and I don't find that funny. So I can appreciate, I, I, I sympathise with Gus more and more. And I would be sitting there thinking, why does Gus not just walk away from him and never actually talk to him again? Yeah. I can understand why, because they're best friends and he, he's used to it. But to me, Gus is the best. Cont uh, Gus, Sean's father, and Lassiter are my mm. three favourite characters. The rest of them... Don't really care enough about, but it's a fun story. Unlike Voyager, whereas I, I enjoy the program but hate most of the characters. Yes. This one, the, the only one I really hate is Sean, the main character. Who's yeah. Around because oh, of the acts. But I do like it, uh, and but then again, accordingly, I should like Sean because he's white, he's male, and he's straight. Whereas I prefer Gus, who's black. Mm. He's, he's male and he's straight. But he's still my favourite character, but I shouldn't have liked him accordingly. Pale skin doesn't work. Yeah, that's, well, that's because he's insanity of somebody. Right, of course, it's insanity. That's why I don't listen. And if somebody says you should, you, you've not to like this or you should like this, well, if well, I should like it, then tough. I will not take <sighs> advice from anybody on what I should like. Yeah, I know like what I like. If we all liked the same thing, we'd be one program on a TV. Well, I've I've, I've reached. I was downloading only once and I've from some stuff. I've I've got some places, but um, I've actually managed to download. I've started downloading Almost Human with Carl Urban. Yeah, I've seen that. Department. I, I really like that. That is a good one. Department bloody yes. Going mm -hmm. way. 
And and Quark, which I'm not sure if I've seen or not, but it's an old American one with that uh, uh, an old American sci-fi comedy about. Uh, oh, I think do you know what I watched? It's it's Kelly suggested it. Crime Traveler. I saw that when it first came out. I haven't we watched that? See, I yet. did not remember any of it. Chloe and it's in it. A couple of people from East Enders and all that are in it. I did not remember it until episode seven. Wow. The one with the lottery. And I rem- as soon as it was all about the lottery, I knew what was going to happen because I remember seeing that. I couldn't remember what program I'd seen it on and I couldn't remember the rest of the story, but I remember the bit about the lottery, how he was constantly trying to get the lottery on and eventually got it on and the guy turned it upside down and read it and he got four numbers instead of six. <laughs> so I remembered that. So when I was watching it, I was sitting there going, that was so because um, Kelly had dropped the link in the chat, and I was it Kelly. I uh, got put the link in the chat for the archive, and I got it from the mm-hmm. archive, and I sat and watched it on the archive, and it was damn good. I enjoyed it, really enjoyed it, and I, I didn't even really recognize it until I got to episode seven, and I thought I've seen this wow. episode seven before I realized mm-hmm. I'd seen it. It was because of that one story, but there you go. So next week is Enemy Mind. Join us for that. But before that, join us for Let's Talk Geeky on Saturday, 8 p.m. UK time, 5 PST, 6 other times at other parts of the country. Three, whatever, whatever, if you just what? just yes. learn to use real time. Yeah. So keep Cheer. an eye on the channel for it. Remember, like, share, and subscribe, please, because um, I've hit more milestones and I'm actually constantly climbing so I'm actually happy the last week last and Saturday I hit 500 and today I'm at 526 wow already so it's climbing yeah. and I've already hit the quarter million views for the channel wow nice so yes I'm Ooh. looking Looking into it and just did more stuff to add. I've added a couple more bits of TV show to the list. It's, I've still got my Christmas ones to add, so I'll need to do that oh, yeah. over the next week. But I'm, I've got a busy week ahead of me. I've got to finish off my character sheet for Castles and Crusades. Mm-hmm. And I got to watch the House Rules videos. Yep. And because I've been that busy right up until last week. I watched it when I, I read the book when I was flying up to and from London and I've not had a chance seeing it because I've been busy, busy, busy. I've not really stopped over the last month and a half. Uh, and it's not necessarily just my room. It's been rebuilt or bits and pieces. It's just everything seems to have actually just caught up with me. Every time yeah. I think, take five minutes because TV is easy. I can do hundreds of stuff with the TV on. So that's on at the moment, and because mm. I don't like a lot, a lot of time when Sean Spencer's, uh, Sean Spencer's, uh, Sean, whatever his name is, is on the TV, I ignore those parts and I just watch the rest of it. <laughs> I know, he's the one that you're meant to watch, but he's the one I ignore yeah. and I watch the rest of it. I know, it's a weird way to watch the TV, but I, because I've got a load of stuff, I could sit and read through a report with the TV on in the background. So let's well, yeah. the radio, because I don't well, let's- know. Let's be honest, most TV and films these days are made for that anyway, aren't they? Yeah. They're but I've been doing that for years. So I, always watch, I always have things on in the background. Yeah. So if people would have a radio on in the background to listen to music. I would rather have a TV show on in the background. Yeah. Like, yeah. I never watch it, but I'd like to listen to a TV show. I do that a lot with with, with YouTube videos as well. If it's not if yeah, it's not if it's not something I need to 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 to, to, to watch, you know, a lot of things you can watch them and you know. You, you 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 don't necessarily have to watch what's on screen because what you're interested in what they're talking about. Yep, exactly. Um, I do that as well. I do basically if I've got other stuff on and I, I, um, I basically I YouTube's on and I watch that as I'm doing other bits and pieces because I've got a database I'm rebuilding. So that's been taking most of my time over the last yeah. Week. So and I've got to actually then convert it to a different format and then re. And then merge the two, and that's going to be fun. But I'm learning how to do that, so I'm having oh, to yeah, do that exactly, for work. Yeah. But so I'm doing it 
a lot of Lonely things. Weekend, like, just yeah. busy, busy, busy. So we'll finish there. And ladies and gents, thank boys and girls, thank you for joining us. And remember, we are not old. We are classic. PJ, Colin, Thanks. and Sleepy Jim, out. Some